What's happening guys, it's Sir William, and today I wanna to talk a little bit about the spare tire. So as you guys know, I made mention in my last video that I put the spare tire up on the roof, and I wanted to give you guys a rundown of how everything went with the spare tire on the roof. So let's first tackle the main thing. Is it heavy? Yes, it's heavy. There's no doubt about it. It's a steel wheel, pretty big in size. Yeah, it's it's heavy to get up there. That being said, I was able to muscle it up there. Also with a good set of tires, hopefully I don't puncture them enough to where I'm gonna have to be constantly lugging this thing up and down, right? Second thing is weight distribution. Well, let me share with you the reasoning that I decided to put the spare tire up on the roof in the first place. You see, if you notice, Taking a look at the Forerunner, of course it's a little bit offset right now, but if you notice, even on flat land, the Forerunner has a little bit of a rake to it. This is primarily because I put a cheap spacer system up here. That is primarily because I damaged my skid plate really bad in Moab the first time that I went out there because with the KDSS suspension, with which this thing came equipped with, it actually sits just a little bit lower than a stock Forerunner. Now, once I put the two inch on there, it leveled it out for the most part, but I still had a little bit of a rake on the back end and I didn't do anything with the back end. Fast forward, now I've got a camper build set up. What's up, buddy? He's pissed off because he's on the leash because he ran off. So here's the deal. So with the camper setup that I've now built, now not only did it have a little bit of a slant to it, but with all that extra weight in there, it's got a pretty big slant to it. So I will eventually address that with a brand new suspension and I'm still exploring options for that route. So stay tuned. So what I did was I moved the spare tire and I moved it right here, strategically located in as close to the center as I could get it on the side with the least amount of weight and as far front as I could get it. The reason? Because whenever it sits down in the back, it actually acts as an anchor. Take a look at what happened at the beach. Whenever you get this stuff, you're gonna have to bring out the big tools. Luckily, we got a shovel with us because we are overlanders and we're prepared for this type of thing. I wasn't stuck because it was down to the frame. I was stuck because that was in the sand. I wasn't stuck in Oregon because it was down to the frame. I was stuck because the spare tire was in the sand or in the snow. So with that being said, I decided to put it up top and everybody's got an opinion about it riding up top. So is it heavy? Yes, it's heavy. Miles per gallon. That was the second thing everybody made mention that would happen is I would lose miles per gallon and they are correct. I did lose a little bit of miles per gallon. One, on the last trip that I took that was roughly about a five to 700 mile trip, round trip, I lost one mile to the gallon. Now, that being said, I'm not so sure that that wasn't due to the fact that whenever I reset the MPG meter uh, was at the beginning of my trip and I didn't look at it until the after of my trip and noticed that I was getting 17 miles to the gallon versus 18 miles to the gallon. The other thing that I did different other than leaving the spare tire up on top of the uh, vehicle versus on the bottom of the vehicle was I ran the vehicle a little bit more because it was a little bit colder outside than what it had been in the previous trip. I know, I probably shouldn't run the vehicle with me sleeping in it. We'll save that discussion for another day. So that being said, I did lose one mile to the gallon. Now, as far as how the truck performed on road and off road, can I tell um, that the spare tire is up there? That's tricky. I really can't tell that the spare tire is up there. So whenever I went off road, I wasn't in any kind of extreme camber situations. Perhaps maybe if I was in extreme camber situations, then maybe I would have been able to tell a difference. However, um, in the switchbacks of the mountains that I normally go through at a pretty good rate of speed, highway speed, I would imagine. So I didn't really notice a whole lot more of the kind of diving or anything like that. It did somewhat seem like I could feel a little bit of the weight up front or up top. Uh, I don't know if this is because of my mind, a placebo effect, what have you, uh, but it did somewhat feel. Now overall though, I don't feel that it harmed the performance of the vehicle at all. Downside to having the spare up here though, is the fact that it sees sunlight constantly. We all know that sunlight on the rubber will eventually make it dry out the last thing that you want is to put your spare on go down the highway at highway speeds and because it's dried out it now blows up the other downfall is of course trying to get it off that's kind of a downfall trying to get into parking garages luckily i stay as far away from people as i possibly can primarily cities the pros to having it up there well like i said before it's not a land anchor any longer it's not sitting in the back 
um, just you know waiting to get caught up on something the other thing is is whenever I go off-road I notice that I keep hitting a lot and what I'm actually hitting is either going to be the hitch or the spare tire and whenever I looked at the spare tire while it was on the ground I notice a lot of rub marks where I've already hit it plenty of times going off-road this is also concerning if you think about going off-road and you come down on a rock and you smash that tire on the rock and you puncture that tire now you have a problem because if if you puncture another tire and you're on the trail now you have no spare as well as no regular tire this is an issue I feel like it's safer up here one more reason to put it up there because it looks cool right I think so I think it looks a lot better up there so it kind of looks like crap with it being a street tire but I think that it looks cool it's got a cool little look to it another benefit to having it up on top of the roof is I don't feel like it rides as low in the back whenever it's up on top of the roof and this is good because right now with it riding in the back I have that rake that I was talking about and then whenever I put it down I feel like or whenever I put the spare tire underneath there I feel that that rake is increased this being said what I want to do is I want to take the forerunner out to some flat land and I want to measure the actual ride height between the two so let's go so what I'm gonna do to find out if it's level is put it in neutral see if it rolls it does not roll so let's take a look outside so measuring it at the very tip right here we are actually at uh, 15 and 3 quarters so that's 15 and 3 quarter inches so let's put the spare tire back up underneath the full runner and see how we do don't judge me on how do I get this thing off <laughs> So he was in there for the last test too, so it's not gonna be that big of a difference, but just in case you were wondering. So my theory is, is that now with the spare tire down here, that it's gonna be um, a little bit lower. So let's find out. Literally has gone down a quarter of an inch. That's it, a quarter of an inch. So my theory is correct. It does go down only a quarter of an inch though. One thing to look at though, is you have about an inch of a uh, tire hanging down below. So you got about an inch and a quarter less ground clearance in the very back of the vehicle whenever you ride with the spare tire down at the bottom. Well, hey guys, I really appreciate you guys watching. This was just a quick overview. To answer you guys' question, whenever I go off-road, I'm probably just gonna put it back up on top of the vehicle again, because I don't necessarily see where it hurt anything. Um, and it did kind of help keep everything out the way, and I didn't have to worry about puncturing it. But what I will say is, as far as dry rod, if you're really worried about dry rod or anything like that, then go ahead and put it um, up underneath the vehicle for you. For as little as you lose, you lose like a quarter inch of a space. I don't know that if it's that big of a deal uh, for you, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it up underneath there for right now. Till next time, peace.